Welcome to Acoustic Corner. I'm Steve Rothenberg, and each week we'll explore the world of acoustic music, from blues to bluegrass, classical, flamenco, and fingerstyle guitar, and everything in between. We'll feature live performances by some of the best musicians and bands in the Denver area, and visit local guitar shops and luthiers to discover where you can find yourself a beautiful custom-made guitar, banjo, or mandolin. For those of you interested in learning how to play guitar or improving your skills, you'll find lessons on how to play fingerstyle guitar, blues guitar, as well as other popular styles. Join us each week for a tour through the acoustic music landscape. There's something for everyone at Acoustic Corner.
I'm Steve Rothenberg, and I'm here with my friend Reed Bennett. We're at um, uh, Gordon's uh, Elite Sound uh, Guitar Shop, uh, and you probably recognize this from uh, a segment earlier ago. I, I just got to have one of these, but I understand there's only two, and they're, they're not for sale, so I'm not going to ask. But Reed, you, you've got an instrument which uh, looks like uh, was uh, actually th that this instrument gave birth to uh, to the one you've got. Yes, and it both came out of the same era. Uh, same era, 1925, 1926. This is a mando bass. Um, if you're familiar with mandolin, uh, mando cello, um, mandola, they're all uh, various uh, take takeoffs on the, the mandolin as far as... Uh, the family that they come from. Now you've got something that's real similar, but it's not a mandolin, it's a, it's a lute. It's a tenor lute, a TL1, uh, V. Gibson tenor lute, right. 1924, and it uh, is uh, featured in this month's Fretboard Journal. I thought I'd mention a Fretboard Journal for those who may not uh, have picked up a copy is one of the best guitar magazines ever. Always has stories about uh, luthiers, about players, uh, about the business. Uh, beautiful pictures. It's a wonderful publication. Right. And this is the uh, the other lore is what they're calling the TL1 tenor lute. And uh, it uh, I came across this here in Denver uh, from a uh, uh, lady whose father had owned it all of his life, and he passed on, and she didn't want to try to keep it. Uh, this one has some uh, issues. I believe this to be a, an original. Uh, period pick guard, but he had trimmed this out and had put a Diarmond pickup here so that he could play it amplified. Uh, so what, this is a 24? Uh, 1924? 1924. 1924 uh -huh. and, and Lloyd Lohr is, was a luthier, and uh, that name doesn't may not mean much to you, but to uh, those in the know, Lloyd Lohr was a uh, master No, he uh, was a luthier. master, and, and Lloyd Lohr was actually uh, an acoustical engineer, and uh, Gibson hired him. He had a fairly short tenure with Gibson. Uh, in his time, the L5 and the F5, some of the most iconic Gibson Mandolin. instruments came right. out, and, and they are the holy grail if they have his uh, signature on the label. This has the same label as a master model uh, F5 or L5, so right. it's, it's really an interesting instrument. They made, uh, by best guesses, are they made under a hundred of these and uh, made them all at once in 1924. And it was a mandola body, uh, had F holes, which was unusual as well for Gibson, a uh, tenor banjo scale neck. And the idea was to lure the banjo players of the time into the mandolin orchestras uh, in the Really? 1920s. What did they have against banjo players back then? Well, uh, the banjos were loud and, oh, and uh, you know, yeah, mandolin yeah, orchestras yeah. <laughs> were mando bass, right. mando okay. cello. So, man so the, the discrimination so, against right. the banjo goes, goes back, uh, right. goes way back. Okay, right. well, that, that explains so, it. Well, so the idea is that, that they were going to, this was going to be a real hit. It was Lohr's baby. He designed it, he oversaw the production. Uh, I've talked to Roger Siminoff uh, and uh, uh, who's Roger? George, uh, Roger's a, a well-known mandolin expert in California. Yeah. Um, uh, to George Gruen and uh, Mandolin Cafe also has some articles about this instrument. So right. it is an interesting uh, piece. Yeah, you don't see these every day, and I certainly have never seen one of these. And and um, I would have uh, said, oh, look at that mandolin, and sure enough, it's mm -hmm. only got four strings and not eight, like uh, like a mandolin. So uh, the real issue with it was they made them and they sounded horrible, <laughs> and the banjo players wanted wow. nothing to do with them. So uh, basically, it went into the uh, trash bin of history. And I see. Um, so, uh, but I love it because of its rarity. There's so few of them uh, still around. So that was a dead end on the uh, the, the, the family tree of um, of Gibson um, string. Uh, it, well, it, it was. It was a flop. Goes. And uh, it was made in right. 24. Lloyd Lohr left Gibson in 1925. So yeah. so this was one of his last uh, creations. Well, um, I'm guessing it's a pretty uh, precious uh, flop then. It is. It doesn't yeah. carry a great deal of value. No. So. Well, how about this one? It's completely different. Uh, now, for those who, uh, if, if, again, I told you guitars come in uh, all, all shapes and sizes. So this looks like a, uh, uh, well, you, I it's guess you could <laughs> use it as a hammer. It's a lap steel, and yeah. uh, uh, it's a K and F, and this is the little K and F emblem. And right. it is a very historic piece. This has um, got some legacy behind it. It, huh? it does. This is 1945. 
and the K and F uh, stand for Doc Kaufman, who was with Rickenbacker for years. Rickenbacker's credited with making the first electric instrument uh, in the frying pan uh, lap steel. And uh, so he got with Leo Fender, who had a radio shop in Fullerton, and so the K and the F are Kaufman, Doc Kaufman, and Leo Fender. Uh, they began making these in uh, 1945, and they made them uh, about half a year in 1946. And my understanding is Doc Kaufman decided that there was no money in this guitar business, and he wanted out, so he got out. And it was at that point that Leo Fender went ahead and formed the Fender Musical Instrument Company. Right. So, so now the amp that went along with this is a historic combination. It is. I, I actually brought a picture. I don't have the amp. They consider this to be the holy grail of Fender amps. So this is a K&F lap steel and a K&F amplifier together. So roughly 1945 you 1945 said? 1945 and part okay. of 46. Starting to get to a time when I would have uh, been around to hear it. Not quite, not quite, not quite. <laughs> this well, is, it's, it's a, it uh, is an interesting design. It is strings through the pickup. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the earlier designs. And in 46, Fender then went to, to different, uh, they changed some of their designs. And right. Well, like I said, there's, uh, there's any number of instruments that you could play with strings. And, and essentially, they're all, all the same in that you, you fret strings, you're going to play with a pick, you're going to play with finger picks. But uh, boy, the variation of how they look and where they've come from and their, their legacies are uh, what makes uh, guitar lovers uh, acquire that, um, you know, that, that uh, disease they call the, the gas disease, GAS. You know, guitar guitar, acquisition, guitar syndrome, acquisition yeah. syndrome. So I, I, I fight that all the time. So, well, thanks for showing those, sure, uh, thank Reed. You. Those, uh, uh, if they show up in my collection, uh, I'll only have you to blame. It could happen. So, <laughs> okay. thanks. You're welcome. Okay, a, a soft one.
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the show, and um, if you play and you'd like to be on the show, or if you know somebody who might like to be, or if you know of a venue that you uh, think might be a good one for us to come down and shoot, um, why don't you contact us at the email address you see on the screen, and uh, we'd love to uh, have you on.